Welcome to the Virtual International Conference on Coastal Engineering. My name is Jane Smith. We're really excited to see so many participants in our conference this year, particularly students. We need the best and brightest in the coastal engineering profession. We had planned to gather in Sydney, Australia this fall, but the pandemic affected our plans. We will still meet again in person in Sydney in July of 2022, and in Rome in the fall of 2024. We look forward to coming together again. I'd like to say a couple of quick thank yous. First of all, to the Coastal Engineering Research Council. The council oversees the organization of the conference and the review of abstracts together with our technical committee. I'd also like to thank our virtual local organizing committee. This group came together last spring to pull together this virtual conference. Thanks so much to Pat, Giorgio, Dan, Nobu, Iwan, Chari, and Odd, and also to our ASC and COPRI supporters and to Tom and Sean. The lion's share of the work was done by Pat Lynette. Thank you so much to Pat. And now I'll turn it over to Pat to provide some logistic information and to introduce our first keynote. Enjoy the conference. Thank you, Jane, and welcome to the VICC meeting. My name is Patrick Lynette. I'm at the University of Southern California. Um, with the virtual local organizing committee, we put together this online conference. Um, our motivation was to provide a means for everyone out there who wished to share their information and their results over the past couple of years to do so. And so hopefully what we put together in this platform allows us to do that. What I would like to do in this talk is first to go through how you use this conference website, this so-called Whova website for the VICCE, particularly how to work through the agenda, how to find other attendees, how to interact and be social in this uh, online setting with the other attendees. When you go to the web page, the home page will look something like this. So you've all been here already, or else you wouldn't have found the presentation you're watching right now. On the left panel, you'll see a number of options. And what I'll do in this talk is I'll quickly go through these options to give you an idea of what you can do in these different pages. First, let's start with the agenda. So the agenda here is quite flexible. There's a lot of information here. When you go through the agenda and you click on any individual session, you will get a page that looks like this. Um, when the session is about to start, that blue lock will disappear. As you scroll down on these pages, you can see how many people are attending or who have added to their agenda. You can see all the individual speakers. You can see their, their titles. Um, and who the moderator is. If you scroll down further, you'll see that each individual talk has its own entry. Right? And so this is a, a, a separate sub session for each individual talk. When you click on one of these talks, you will get another page. After the live stream, you will be able to view the individual talks on this page. And I'll show you a demonstration of that in the end. On these individual talk pages, you can scroll down, you'll see all of the authors for that particular paper. You'll see a short abstract with text on the web page, and there will also be a link to an extended abstract, which you can click on to get more details about the talk. Next, let's talk about how to use the attendee page. So if you click on attendees on the left, you will be given a screen filled with everyone's information. This is a bit overwhelming to be honest because we have so many different attendees. Uh, as of right now, which is a few hours before the conference when I'm recording this, we are at 2,500 individual attendees. The best way to sort through these is if you're looking for someone in particular, you can put in their name and find them, click on the profile to get a little bit of information about them. You will also see a send message button there that you can click on to send that person a personal message. In the example here, I'm sending a 
quick generic message to Professor Nister. Um, you can do this with literally anyone in that attendee list. So hopefully you find some people in that attendee list that maybe you went to school with, maybe you haven't seen in a while. You can check in with them. On the community listing, what you'll find is uh, a small version of a forum discussion page. So in each of the topics on the uh, topic pane, um, you'll see discussion groups. And anyone who's a member of the conference, who's watching these presentations, who's participating, can comment in any of these, um, these forums. Now, also note that if there is a particular topic that you would like to start some discussion on, you can create your own topic with the blue button on the top of the screen, add topic or social group. So this is going to be a great way to have technical discussions with the group as a whole um, to get opinions on a wide range of things. Now let's go to some of the uh, exhibitor and sponsor information. So if you click on exhibitors, you'll see that right now we have a number of educational programs. We have a number of future conferences. If you click on these, they're trying to recreate a exhibition booth like we would have in a normal conference. So you'll find a description about the particular exhibitor. Um, many of them have videos that you can watch, uh, contact information and websites. Next, you can click on sponsors. And so these sponsors will begin to grow over the week as we add more to the system. The sponsors page works quite similar to the exhibitor page on this, this page. You'll find information about sponsors, additional information and places to contact them. In the messages tab is where you will find all of your communications with the uh, attendees of the conference. And so this is kind of like a, a, a chat room um, that records all of your one-on-one -on -one conversations with others at the conference. The session Q&A button will, if you are a presenter, tell you who has asked questions in your sessions. And if you are a question asker, it will tell you um, where you have asked some questions. There's also the Twitter link towards the bottom of that panel. And so this will show you all of the Twitter, the tweets um, that have used the hashtag VITCE. And so as of right now, there are a handful of them that are starting to be uh, more. I encourage you to use this hashtag if you're someone who spends some time on social media to broaden the exposure of your talk. Going back now to how the individual sessions will run. So here I show an example of a session page that will be presented on a live stream. So when the live stream schedule is up and you come to this page, you will be greeted with a, a Zoom interface such as this. You can choose to connect with computer audio or phone audio. In general, we recommend that you use computer audio to view the presentations. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a Q and A button and a raise hand button. You can see here that while this presentation is running, you have the Q and A button at the bottom and the raise or lower hand button. Once the live stream is over, the individual talks will be available for on-demand viewing. Clicking on that individual talk will bring you to a screen such as this, where the YouTube video for the presentation will be embedded. Again, you'll be able to watch these presentations at any time after the scheduled presentation of the live stream. And these presentations will be available for a few months after the presentation is over and will eventually be connected to the proceedings of the conference. For these on-demand presentations, the only way to ask questions is with the session Q&A button on the right panel. So simply click on that and type in your question and then hit submit. That question will go directly to the presenter and he or she will answer your question and your answer, their answer will appear here in the session Q&A. You can also use the chat feature on this screen to ask general questions not specific to 
the author, perhaps of general questions about the topic of the presentation that you may be interested in getting a broader opinion about. Okay, so that's how you use the conference website. Um, it's different, right? So play around with it, particularly in the first couple of days, try to get used to it. Um, let's see what we can make of it, right? And so along those lines, really, Think of this virtual ICCE as a giant experiment. In our community, we've never done anything on this scale for a conference like the ICCE. It has its pros and its cons. The pros are that we have a much wider exposure, or at least a much wider potential exposure to your talks and to interacting with others in the community. The con is, of course, that we miss all the fun social interactions that happen during and after the conference sessions and in exploring cities all over the world. So think of it as a giant experiment. Um, some things will work well, some things will not. Feel free to give me any sort of feedback you wish about what you think did work well and what did not. When you look at the talks and the attendees, what you'll see is that most of the talks are by students and most of the attendees are students. Um, and so with uh, 2,000 plus attendees, we have a lot of young professionals in the crowd for the VICCE. So to those of us in the audience like me, the older crowd, just encourage these young researchers, these young engineers and question them. Give them some grace because of the strangeness of the platform, but they are the future of our community, so don't give them too much grace. To the younger crowd, please think of this as your conference, right? So this is uh, very different um, for those of us who have been around a while. The types of interactions that are required for a platform like this are not necessarily what the older group is used to. So make the most of this. Use this as if it was made for you. Don't be shy to interact. Um, make use of what has been provided. Likewise, uh, because we've made the registration free and accessible online, we have a much wider and more international audience as compared to an in-person conference. And so what that means is that there are many new people here, people who would not traditionally be able to go to an ICCE or maybe wouldn't even have it on their radar because it's a little bit outside of their area of expertise. So when you see these people, whether they're attendees, or presenters, engage with them, ask them their opinions, uh, meet some new people. Participate and interact. So the big con, as I mentioned, for a virtual conference is the lack of social interaction, the one-on-one -on -one conversations that we'd love to have. Um, find some way to do that here, and you can do it on the web as I have shown. Um, the phone app is quite convenient for that too. It's a little bit easier to scroll through all of uh, the attendees and, and find people from where you're at, maybe people who graduated from your university. All right, so that is enough from me. So let's get this started. Um, I'll raise a cheers um, to the ICCE, trying to get this together in a very strange COVID year. Looking forward to many great presentations and lots of